Hey, what's up? This is Rick from Adelita's Way, and you're watching Tattoo.com. Hey, everybody, it's Mischievous Mel, day two of Lost Rages with Adelita's Way. Woo! How are you feeling? I feel good. Oh, I feel awesome. And why do I feel awesome? Because I just seen you guys on stage. I had a good time. It's always fun playing Las Vegas. I had a great, I mean, you see what's going on out there. I don't even got to sit here. I mean, for everybody that's not able to see what's going on out there, it's madness. Well, is what I, I, I loved what you said on stage. If anybody comes into those gates after we played, you let them know what they fucking missed. You missed it, motherfuckers. Adelita's way burned it down. I love it. I love it. I was whispering. <laughs> Did I blow his mic up? You blew the mic up. You blew it up. Sometimes you got to blow it up. You do. Well, I, I've been a fan for a long while. You guys are awesome. But I am pissed, and I'll tell you why. You guys are too fucking underrated. I don't mind being underrated. I don't mind. I don't mind being in that. It's, it's, I'm grateful for people even to say that we're underrated. Um, I'll take it. Somebody's got to be it, and it'll be me. And I'll just keep writing the best songs I can and keep writing great songs and keep building our fans and keep selling out shows. And until one day, maybe 10, 15 years passes, they'll say, that's the most underrated band in the fucking, you know, that decade or that era. I'm down with it. I'm down with being that. Well, you guys are awesome on stage. And it, the passion, like I said, that hometown passion, and it's not even just his hometown. I mean, it's real. I mean, it's not like you guys are getting up there, like, reading the back of your hand, like, hello, Kentucky, and you have no, me, I, you I perform that hard every night. I perform hard, as hard as I can every night. I want every night to be the best night possible. Uh, I'm blessed with an amazing band. I got one of the best drummers in the game behind me. Uh, I got I got the best band members. I I, I feel really uh, excited to play with these guys. And when you love playing with your with your friends and you love what you do, it shows in the performance. Well, I'm lucky enough to have seen you both in huge arena or er, festivals. I say yeah. arena, but there's no roof on it, so I guess it's not arena. But huge fucking festivals and then smaller intimate clubs. And um, as a fan, I like the smaller intimate ones because I'm up close and basically I can, you know, I'm there. Um, big ones I like too, but I kind of feel disconnected. But I'm wondering, what do you, as as the man, feel about it? There are two different th entities. There are two different powers at B. One is a festival setting where sometimes it feels like Woodstock and it gives you a little reminiscence of what we're, we didn't get to experience back then, you know, but we're getting to experience it in a different form. So I love the festivals. I love the camaraderie of the rock community. I love the bands being all together. I love seeing my friends at the festivals, but there's nothing better than being in a house where everyone came to specifically see your band. And I love headlining and we're a headliner and that's it. I mean, we, we love to headline. Uh, we don't, you know, look, at the end of the day, I'm going to say it, uh, because we're in a system that's a bit different, uh, we're, we're independent, we have no manager, no label, a lot of our, our, our uh, what's the, com uh, comrades, a lot of our friends, uh, they're not even allowed to take us on tour, and uh, quite frankly, I don't even really lose much sleep or think about it, because we're a headliner, we do our own thing, we bring our own fans, we focus on our shows, uh, it's always great to jump on tour with one of your friends' bands. It's always great to play with the big dogs, but at the end of the day, there's nothing like a headlining show. You know, I'm glad that you brought that up because we just um, purchased Rock Radio, and there's an ugly side to it of where everybody but the bands are getting the payback, and it's your guys' babies. You, you, you write it, you perform it, and you, you, you know, and then it just all becomes corporate, and it all becomes just this big thing. And, I mean, no offense to people that are working within the wheel but I love I love that you're doing it that way and look I own some of my biggest songs in my career I own some of the biggest hits I've ever written and uh you know the day that I'm not on this earth anymore that's going to stay in my blood and stay in my family and it's going to keep passing from generation to generation and I wouldn't have it any other way you know it feels beautiful waking up and being your own boss there's there's nothing like it um you know I feel on the other side of things when you're a part of such a monstrous corporate entity the pressure they put on you is, is a little bit of why I believe you see a lot of mental illness in artists and, you, and the way that they take advantage of us and the way that they, they pressure us and talk to us and treat us is very stressful. Uh, and I endured that as well. Um, and I'll tell you this, there's nothing like being waking up and being the only guy you answer to. I love it. And I love your guys' attitude. I love your music and all of what your, all your passion and angst and happiness comes out. And that's what makes you guys one of the fucking best bands to watch. Thank you. Like, you, you just own it. They fucking owned Lost Rages today, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. There might be little ears around. That's all good. Them little ears, they have, a they have a rebel soul daddy, rock and roll, baby, you know. They're growing up in a rock and roll household. I gotta ask the question on a mommy level. Do you, like, sing them to sleep? I mean, like, I can't imagine growing up saying, you know, 
I don't, I don't even think, I think they sing me to sleep. At the end of the day, I, my, my daughters, the one thing I instill in them is to, to dream big and to do whatever they want to do. And, and my, my oldest daughter has really just taken a real extreme liking to performing and being on stages. And, and uh, she's a little singer, man. I think the world should be watching up for her. I was going to say, look out next generation of Ed Leader's Way. Oh, yeah. I, she might be better. I'm thinking, I'm thinking she's going to be better than Dad, so... Awesome. Well, I know I've kept you for a really long, long time, but I'm going to keep you even longer because I want to move to ink. Let's do it. This is the part where we get to see some skin, and it doesn't sound creepy when I say, Skit naked and show me something. Well, this piece right here is uh, it's the beginning. i got to get added to it. i got to add my kids onto it. But this is me and my wife got matching tattoos. Oh, that's awesome. It says Queen Janine right there. Aww. And then on my, my back is very unfinished. Uh, let's see. Can we get it up or am I sweating too bad? Oh, you're fine. I just didn't want to be like, you know, all groping. <laughs> the one on the top is the first head you ever got. I got it on my 17th birthday. It's just, it's just, and I don't mean one life. I think life is eternal. I believe in God, but you know, when I'm on this earth, I live it. I live life to the fullest and I, and I accomplish my dreams and I went after everything, even when everybody, uh, you know, doubted or didn't believe or wanted to be pessimistic. And then the one is my angel, man. That's it's, I got to give him a face because he's my conscience. He's my he guides me, you know, um, protects me. You know, sometimes I've I've been on autopilot crossing the street, and you know, something in my mind says pay attention. You know, and that's that's what my back represents the angel that's with me. That was absolutely beautiful, and I'll tell you why because I'm on like my own spiritual journey right now. Not to talk about me, but music helps me, and also I'm I'm about faith, but not religion. And what you just said. Wow. Of course. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, at the end of the day, sometimes you got to reflect and realize you're blessed and realize that uh, every great thing you ever thought of, every great thing that ever happened to you in your life didn't just come because from you were being awesome. It came uh, through through electronic wavelengths of, of our creator. And uh, I mean, it, look, we're very, very complicated the way we're created, and it took something to make that. So it's a beautiful thing. Oh my God, now I even love Adelaide's way even more because that, that's all, awesome. I mean, seriously, like that. Keep the faith because look at what they did. Keep the God faith. gave them the best talent out there and when they were up against some pretty shitty odds, you guys. We never doubted. We guys, never doubted. We okay. never had doubt. We knew I stayed strong even during the toughest times uh, as the business tried to, they tried to stomp you out like a cigarette butt, man. Uh, and they couldn't do it to me because I had too much faith, too much belief, too much will, too much power. Too much talent. I'm just saying the truth, you know. They couldn't stop. They couldn't stop us. And you keep it going by making sure you check out Adelita's way when they come to a fucking stage near you, because they will leave you wanting more. I love it. Thank you guys all. Thank you the fans. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, like I said, it ain't possible without the fans. The fans make every bold move that we're able to make possible. Thank you very much.